Hi, this is Paul Palmer. So last, the last discussion we had, I suppose I was having a one-way discussion, was about linearity. And we were talking about calibration and what difference does it makes if you're looking at linearity of a response curve on when you're doing the, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to avoid saying the words that I'm going to describe now. So we were talking about the linearity to see how well the equipment that you're calibrating reflects the actual results. So when you're doing the traceability to national standards, and I suppose it's not just pharmaceutical manufacturing, there's a lot of different industries where we use calibration and calibrated equipment. Now, my primary focus is, is life sciences. So it's, it's really pharmaceuticals, medical devices, biotech, all ATMP probably at times, but the scope for opportunities there is quite limited. So I'm, I'm not really got that much experience yet. I'm getting there, but it, it takes time, doesn't it? Because you have to be involved in specific projects. So today I want to talk about the next stage that you need to consider when you're looking at the calibration of your equipment. So probably this time we'll talk about balances. I think last time we were talking about temperatures and temperature measuring equipment and response, electronic response. So this time we're going to talk about the balance and talk about precision. Now, you can see on the two different um, targets, I suppose, behind me, that you've got a different spread of the results. Okay, maybe they look like ball bearings or shots or bullet holes or something, but that's not what we're really talking about. So there's a, a few different things when you're looking at calibration. The, the core ones you want to look at is linearity, precision and accuracy. And today we're looking at precision. So to understand what they mean when they give you the precision um, results of, your, of the testing that they've done, you want to think about the actual target value. So the target value is the actual value from the equipment that they're using to give them traceability to national standards. And of course, there's a degree of error with every sort of measurement equipment, including those. So that should be known as well. But when we talk about precision, we're talking about how close to the target value. Actually, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, that's accuracy. Precision, you're talking about how well the results are clustered. It's because I'm thinking about the next video I'm going to record for you for tomorrow. Okay, so we're looking at how well the, the results are clustered. So how precise, when you repeat the test, do the results come together? Are they close together? Are they far apart? Are they all over the place? Are they like when I go shooting, you get one up here and one down there and one over there? Not that I've been for a long time. Maybe it would have been better when I was 17. In fact, I think it was when I used to go with my dad, it was central, central. My precision was really tight, but sometimes the accuracy was off. And what we did, we used to adjust the sights for the accuracy. So we would just say it was up left every time. And uh, I used to cut holes where all the results, all the shots came together in one place. Sometimes you even thought, well, you missed that target completely. Ah, actually, no. It's slightly off center. It's actually an oval because it did two shots through the same hole. And that was with a 2 2 rifle, nothing manufactured, magnificent. And it was laid down at, I don't know, 30, 40 meters. I can't remember now. It's a long time ago. So back to the topic precision. So the precision is how closely you get together when you do the same measurement multiple times. So as you can see, the target on the my right to you has better precision than the target on my left to you. And it's really funny because it's mirrored. So as you can see, when, they, when they're going less precise, the shots are all over the place. If they're all over the place and you're doing calibration, you've got low precision, how are you going to adjust it? Well, it depends what tolerance you've got. If, for example, both of these, say the outer white circle is 0 0.01 milligrams, is that micrograms? And you, well, 
0.01 grams, I suppose it should be. And you decide that you want to, that the all of the results for both options are within your acceptable tolerance. So you've got your acceptance criteria you've set at the beginning. And you find that in both cases it's acceptable. Well, you don't need to worry. But what if it's only acceptable within the inner white circle? Not the red one, not the red one here, but the first inner white circle. Well, if, if that's your acceptance criteria, that it's got to be inside that circle, well, sh clearly the one with a low precision has failed because you've not met the acceptance criteria. And that's what you also need to think clearly about when you're looking at calibration data. I had one that I looked at the other day and they had a tolerance of 0 0.01. It wasn't um, grams, it was, it was talking about Pascal's. But anyway, the acceptance criteria is 0 0.01. And unfortunately, the unit under test was only measuring to the first decimal place. But they said pass. Well, how can it pass an acceptance criteria of 0 0.01 if you can't actually measure it? You can't see whether it's 0 0.01 out, 0 0.04 out. How can it be acceptable if the, if the test results are not to the level of accuracy you need? Maybe the precision, the repeatability was okay. But if you can't actually deliver the result, then you can't meet your acceptance criteria. And it's the same with precision. If you cannot do it repeatedly, okay, maybe one result was inside. Maybe you, you if you had only done one, two, three, four, five, eight of these um, results on the low precision one, well, you could have accepted. But no, you didn't. You did multiples and they were outside the blue and they're out the other side and it failed. So be really careful that you understand what you're talking about when you're looking at results, when you're looking at data. I suppose this is what I'm really getting at. It's not just calibration. When you're looking at data, think about what it really means. Does that one result mean you've got good precision, good accuracy, good linearity, good reproducibility, and then you can do your validation work as well as your calibration. So just to summarize, high precision, keeping it tight together, low precision, spread. Okay, that's it for me for today. It's Paul Palmer. Talk to you soon.